This video deals with the activity of a sample and the mass of the sample, the source, uh, in order to produce a certain activity at a later time. So we're going to deal with uh, phosphorus uh, 32, that isotope, which has a half-life of 14.262 days. Um, teachers working at a place where the order has to be put in at the beginning of the semester. Uh, but the experiments in this nuclear uh, situation won't be done until week 12. And let's say that that's going to be 84 days after the order is shipped. Uh, for the experiment to be fruitful, the activity after these 84 days elapse uh, from the shipment uh, must be 4.5 mega becquerels. Um, so not using curies, using uh, the becquerel, a little bit more standard unit, but uh, I'll comment that that's not a big concern. So 4.5 mega becquerels is desired 84 days after the source is shipped. We actually want to know what is the mass of the source that the company has to ship to us that we should order. So in this, there are some uh, really three key equations that help us determine things. Uh, to get the mass, we need to know the number of nuclei. We'll let n be the number of nuclei. Uh, with that and using Avogadro's number and the number of grams per mole for this isotope of phosphorus, we can calculate the mass. So once part of our calculation is to come up with the number of nuclei of phosphorus 32 that are required. In order to come up with that number, we'll need to know what is the activity at the time of shipment, I'll use a sub naught for that, uh, meaning time equals zero for our time interval that's going to be 84 days. Uh, so that, those are the steps we're going to go through. So first I'm going to calculate the activity uh, required when the source is shipped. Then we'll calculate the number of nuclei and we'll get, find the, the mass that's uh, present in the source um, along that way. So equations that will be important here. To come up with the uh, beginning activity, we are told the final activity, um, the 4.5 mega becquerels is the final activity. So I could put a sub f there. And our beginning activity is what we're going to need in this step of calculations. And then e to the minus lambda t. Lambda is the decay constant, and t will be this 84 days. Um, but this is our rule for how the activity decreases exponentially. We have a starting and initial activity. We have a final activity. We can compute that with e to the minus lambda t. Well, the lambda. The lambda is the decay constant. The decay constant is related to the half-life through this calculation, 0.693, and then t one-half. And then Another uh, contribution here, there's a connection between activity and the number of nuclei in the sample. And that connection is the activity, whether it's the beginning or the final. The activity is equal to the decay constant multiplied by the number of nuclei. So we'll use this calculation first to get us our uh, activity when the sample is shipped. Then we'll do a calculation with this relationship to move from activity to number of nuclei. In both of these calculations, we'll make use of this lambda value. So in fact, let's go ahead and calculate lambda right now. The lambda is going to be 0 0.693. We are given the half-life in units of days. I'm going to stay with that for now. We'll have to make an adjustment later. But dividing 0.693 by 14.262, you should follow along on your calculator. And I came up with 0 0.04859. And that has units of 1 over days. Important to keep track of your units here. So we have the lambda. <coughs> Excuse me. Let's go ahead and use our decay equation here. The final activity after the 84 days, we know we need 4.5 mega becquerels. And I'm going to do a little conversion here uh, right away. This 4.5, the mega is 10 to the 6. <clears throat> and the becquerel is the decays per second. 
So I'll leave that here. Um, but the mega putting into the 10 to the 6. And then we have a naught, that's our unknown. E to the minus lambda is this 0 0.04859. That is units 1 over days. And then we multiply by 84 days. So the days will cancel. It's important when you do this calculation that the units in the denominator of lambda are the same as the units on the time. So that's a requirement. You have to make sure that's the case to get the correct result. So we have 1 over days. We're multiplying by days. We're, we're ready. So let's go down one more here. And 4.5 times 10 to the 6 Becquerel is our initial activity. I'm going to multiply these two numbers, make it a negative, activate e to the x on my calculator. You should do this also. 0 0.01688. <clears throat> Excuse me. So we have uh, the means now to calculate a sub naught. We're going to divide both sides by 0 0.01688 and recover then that the initial activity needs to be 266.6 .6 times 10 to the 6 Becquerel. So we've accomplished part of this uh, string of calculations are required. We have the value of A0. Now let's make use of this relationship between activity and number of nuclei. We have the activity. This A is a general A. It could be the final activity or the initial activity. It's related to the number of nuclei. And we go ahead and make use of that. So 266.6 times 10 to the 6 Becquerel. And now I'm going to go ahead and put in decays per second, the unit of the Becquerel. The Becquerel is 1 decay per second, 1 decay per second. And now I need the lambda. My lambda is 0 0.04859, 1 over days, and then n. Can I go ahead and put the numbers into the calculator right now? And your answer is no. I've got a mismatch in units here. I've got, sorry, seconds on the left side in the denominator, but days on the right side. So I'm going to do a conversion. And I'm going to convert this seconds into days. So 266.6 .6 times 10 to the 6 decays per second. You could also convert the days into seconds, but um, we need to multiply by the number of seconds in a day, 86,400 seconds in a day. So our seconds units will cancel and we'll have decays per day equals this 0 0.048591, I believe. No, 1 over days. I better just write days here. This is a unit, uh, not an extra digit. And we still have the n. So at this point, I'm going to put these numbers into a calculator, 266.6 .6 times 10 to the 6 times 86,400, divide by 0 0.04859. The days are canceling. And this um, Becquerel, this decays, really relates to the number of nuclei. So there's the number of nuclei are, are going to be generated with the units that we have here. Um, activity is related to number of nuclei. So this is another way to think about this, this decays per second. It's the decrease in the number of nuclei per unit time. So decays is related to delta n. It's how much the n number is decreasing. So it's legitimate. Okay, it's, it's an OK way to do this. But what we end up here with, the number of nuclei, 4.7405 times 10 to the 14th. And you may round slightly different than I do. Not worried about that. We'll get a reasonably close answer, the two of us. Now that we have the number of nuclei, how do we find the mass in grams? Well, we can get to the number of moles by using Avogadro's number. So I'm going to go ahead and 
do a conversion down here. 4.7405 times 10 to the 14th nuclei multiplied by one mole of this isotope. 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd nuclei. And this division will tell me how many moles. And then I'm going to go ahead and just continue this. For this element, for this isotope, phosphorus 32, roughly there are 32 grams per mole. You can look up a more accurate value in a table if you wish, but roughly 32 grams per mole gives our last conversion factor. So using A equal lambda N, we got the number of nuclei. Using Avogadro's number, we're able to find the number of moles we have. And then the number of grams per mole, you can see the moles are canceling off, the nuclei are canceling off. We'll have the number of grams, so be sure to do this on your own calculator. But my answer, 2.52 times 10 to the minus 8 grams of phosphorus 32. So again the steps here we were given the final activity though so this equation allows us to calculate the initial activity the activity is related to the number of nuclei and then using Avogadro's number and the number of grams per mole we can calculate the mass of the uh, shipping sample what mass we have to order. We have to tell the company to ship us 2.52 times 10 to the minus 8 grams of phosphorus 32 in a safe way. Or maybe we'll go pick it up in a lead line container. Um, so if you have questions on this, please ask your instructor.